Hey, good morning. It's Jamie, and I am back for another video on making correlograms. Correlograms are just tables containing correlation coefficients for a lot of different variables so that you can quickly see which variables have positive correlation, which have negative correlation, and which have no correlation. To make this table, I've copied the data that I'm using into my tab A4, because this is A4 for the project. And I'm going to make the table right next to it. It's a lot easier than switching back and forth when you're writing all these formulas in. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So to start, I'm going to copy the names of some of my variables into the correlogram. I'm going to bring price, true to size, true to width, comfort, style, overall, and percent five stars. Then I might as well just while we're working on this, I think I will in a very clunky and unelegant manner center all this data and switch it to a number format and then center all the data. Okay, great. And then I'm going to write those same words down to label all the rows. Price, true to size, true to width, comfort, style, overall, and percent five stars. And then I'm going to break with my tradition and right align those. Great. So what I want in each of these boxes is to have the box contain the correlation coefficient for the two variables that they're connected to. So this variable should, this cell should contain the correlation coefficient between true to size and price. How much are they correlated? Right, this one will contain the co correlation coefficient of price which it, with itself, which of course will be one because everything is correlated perfectly with itself. So how do I do these? I enter C-O-R-R-E-L, that's the Excel formula for correlation. And then I need two arrays, array one and array two. In this case, both arrays are price. So I do command shift down enter for price and I get C5 to C153. And then I'm gonna type in C5 Sorry, comma. Let me scroll down to make sure I didn't mess that up. Okay, good. C5 to C153, comma, and I'm going to enter it again. C5, colon, C153. All right. So I want to take this formula and drag it to the right so that I can get the correlation coefficients with each of these variables to price. So if I'm going to do that, I need to have an absolute reference for one pair of these variables. So I'm going to put an absolute reference on the first instance of C5 to C153. I'm using command T, we might use F4. And now my final formula, or it's actually my second to final formula, we're going to tweak it one more time, shows us with equals Corel, and then C5 to C153 with absolute references, and then C5 to C153 with relative references. And that's going to work just well for this row, but I don't really even want to have to enter this for every row. So the thing that I'm going to change so that I can drag this down is in my second set, my second array, I'm going to place a dollar sign using shift four only in front of the number. So check that out. If you're on a split screen, you might want to make your screen a lot bigger or just close out of the split screen for a second, but I'm going to jump in and show you that formula. So can you see it here? The first array of C to C153 has a dollar sign in front of the C and the 5. 
the second array has just a dollar sign in front of the five and, and in front of the 153, just in front of the numbers. That allows me to drag down in my spreadsheet and to have the numbers not also be dragged down. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is drag to the right and this gives me my correlation coefficients for price and everything else. There are two ways to make a correlogram. In one way, you fill all the boxes. In another way, you only fill half the boxes. And that's because a correlogram is symmetrical. I'm going to fill all the boxes, and then I'll remove half of them so you can see it both ways. So, if I want to drag this down to the next row, and I want to create the correlation coefficients with TTS, true to size, I can drag it down one row. But now, you can see that it stays. It's the same formula. What I need to do now is change the first array to reference column D. And the fastest way to do that is change the letter manually. And that should leave you with the formula. The first array has absolute references on both the letter and the number, and it's referencing column D. You can see that here, it's now referencing column D, and that's absolute reference, because true to size is the variable that we're using in our entire row. And then the variable that we want to scroll through for the row, price in this case, has only the dollar sign in front of the numbers. Then we drag it across. Then we copy it and we paste it. And true to width is in column E. So we change the first array to reflect to, to take into account or to reference column E and we hit enter and then we drag it across. We copy and paste into the comfort row. I mean I suppose you can also drag down and then change each of these individually. Average comfort rating is in column F so those E's become F's. Double check that you've done it right because price and comfort rating will be highlighted. This is now. I'm going to tell it to ignore that error. And then now we can drag this across. Style, it takes a while, doesn't it? This is a little bit of a pain in the butt of a, of a function. There is an easier way to do it on Excel's analysis tool pack. I'm not showing you this right now because a lot of people I know are working on Chromebooks and they can't get the analysis tool pack. So I'm just doing this, but if you're on, if you're familiar with the analysis tool pack, you could Google it and do it that way too. Style is in column G. So I change those E's to G's. Then I double check that my columns look like they're supposed to. I want the correlation coefficient between price and style. Those are both highlighted. It matches the columns here, price and style. I drag to the right. Then overall rating is in column H. I change both E's to H's. Then I double check that the columns for overall and price are highlighted. I hit enter and I drag to the right. And then I do the same thing with five stars. Percent five stars is in I. And see how percent overall and percent five stars are the same? I'm going to just double check. So that looks right. If you see two correlation coefficients that are the same right next to each other, it's a bit of a red flag. Okay. Here is my correlogram. Let's label it. I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to merge all those together. I'm going to make them yellow. That's my theme color of the spreadsheet. And I'm going to call it correlogram. And then 
just to make myself happy, I'm going to change the font to Kindara because that matches the font that I'm using in the questions. I'm going to make it bold. All right. So let's take a look at a quick check to see if your Corellogram is most likely right. I mean, if you're doing following along with the men's data and you're doing what I'm doing, it should match mine exactly. But what about when you get to the women's, right? Is it right? Is it not right? So some things to check on is that it is symmetrical. So take a look here how price has a correlation of 0.18 with both overall and five stars. If we then take a look at price in the row, and we get over here, price shows a correlation of 0.18 with both overall rating and five stars. It's symmetrical, right? Whatever price correlation coefficients show up in the column will be identical to the correlation coefficients shown in the row. Another thing to take a look for is that in the diagonal, every value will be one. And that's because at each of these diagonal points, the correlation coefficient represents the correlation of the row item and the column item, and that's themselves. So when something is correlated with themselves, it's one. And you can see when you click in those cells that the first array, F153, and the second array, F153, match. So then what do we do? What are we looking for? Let's go back to the question. Insert a text box. You're going to actually describe this. I'm just going to describe it verbally, but you're going to write it down. Insert a text box and discuss the strength of correlation between the pairs of variables. Which variables have the strongest correlations? Which have the weakest? Is there anything particularly surprising or unexpected in the relationship? So do you need to tell me a sentence for each correlation? No. I want you to tell me what you see that's important right? Patterns, that kind of thing, right? So I'm going to highlight all of this data and I'm going to insert, no, I'm not. I'm going to go home and I'm going to insert conditional formatting. There's a few different things you can do here and do the one that works best for your brain. One option is a data bar like we did before. I chose yellow. It's my spreadsheet theme color or my tab theme color. And here, all the ones stand out immediately because they're the largest. But then you can quickly eyeball other patterns that are large too. Like for instance, I see a lot of large correlations here in the comfort row. Comfort seems to be correlated pretty heavily with true to width, with style, with the overall rating, and with the percent five stars. Lots of things are, are correlated with overall rating, but price and true to size aren't really that strongly related to overall satisfaction. They show a small, a weak, positive relationship. Here, if we look in price, price is positively correlated with all of our variables. As price goes up, shoes are more likely to be reported to be true to width and true to size. As price goes up, comfort tends to increase perception of style tends to increase, and overall ratings tend to increase. But those relationships are much, much smaller than, say, comfort. As comfort increases, we're going to see overall rating, the overall shoe score, increase a lot more. So which variables have the strongest correlations and which have the weakest? What I'm seeing is that Perceptions of comfort and style and width are most strongly related to these overall satisfaction measures, the overall ratings and the overall five stars, while price and true to size do have an impact on overall rating, but those impacts are a lot smaller. You know, if I glance at this, I would think, huh, if you're looking to make a men's running shoe and you want people to like it, comfort seems to be the biggest name in the game, which is what you'd expect, right? Style is strongly correlated with, with overall satisfaction too. You don't want that shoe to be ugly, but, but at least in the world of men's running shoes, comfort seems to be the most important thing, at least based on correlation, which doesn't imply causation, but we'll get to that later in the class. 
So that's the kind of thing that I would have you write in your text box, what your observations are. Um, surprising or unexpected relationships. I thought there'd be a stronger relationship with price, and I and style is pretty important, so I wouldn't say I'm surprised at how unimportant it is. You know, style is, let's see, style is actually more important than true to width. So well, that's kind of, that's not too surprising, but, and price is not very, there's not a lot of correlation there. It's a small positive correlation. So if you're thinking you can buy a better running shoe by spending more money, um, there's some evidence, right? Some correlation between price and and satisfaction, but in that overall rating, but it seems like comfort is probably more important than price. So I'd try some inexpensive shoes and see if they were comfortable because I think you'll be happier if they're comfortable. Anyway, that's my three cents. Let me know how it goes.